thousands of owner operator car haulers want to know how do I grow my business? They want to move your cars, but they need to be able to communicate with you about the auto transport business. So let's talk to a car hauler. Charles Lemons of Lemons Hauling Services and the YouTube channel Brova Chaz Lemons. If you've got questions for Charles, chime in, say hello, make new friends, and network with the best on ATI Auto Business. <laughs> What's up, Ecosystem? Welcome back to Industry Logistics on ATI Auto Business every Thursday where everyone learns more about the automotive industry. Uh, do me a favor. Let's go ahead and bring in my co-host and then we'll pop into what's happening today. Sue, can you see me and hear me okay? I can. How about you? All right. I can see you. I can hear you. Get you applause. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Janice. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Janice. We got Janice's thoughts of the day. Now, I recently saw on somebody else's content that they kicked off the show talking about a restaurant or dinner or something, and we're not going to do that. No. We're going to go right into information. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, starting with, geez, Jay, where's the, uh, got your graphic up here, Jay? And... <laughs> Such a great intro, and then the graphics not even ready. Um, we've got Charles Lemons of. There you can now you can see it. He has a car hauling service, Lemons Car Hauling Services. That's he funny. has a YouTube he, channel, and, they, and he's hauled for me a couple times. Has he really? Awesome. Yeah, I think so. Oh, that's awesome. Unless there's a different lemon, it might be, but I need to go look. So, well, well, let's take a look. Um, he has a YouTube channel as well. He talks to car haulers in the lot. There is a thing. I, I'm fully aware of it by now, years into ATI. I don't drive a truck. I lose that street cred with a car hauler. I also mm -hmm. talk about dealers and tech, and I lose that credibility too. The thing is, here's the difference. I'm in touch with dealers, shippers, brokers, etc., who are a major part of this ecosystem. So we have to figure out a way to come together on this deal. And maybe Charles can help. Charles is with us today. I think he's already in the waiting room. Oh, yeah, he's in the waiting room, ready to go. This is his YouTube channel, Brova Chaws Lemons. And with recent videos, talk about exposing car hauling, day in a life. And, in fact, here he is. He's in the lot talking to another car hauler. <laughs> now, this is his rig. Nice. And I, I, I got the cover photo wrong. He's got, you know, more of a two, two. car. Yeah. yeah. And I, I was wrong, too. It's another lemon tree hauling that hauling. Lemon tree. <laughs> well, that's how many carriers there are. Yeah. Shout there out to go. all the carriers out there. Yeah. So that was obviously he's picking those up at Amazon, right? <laughs> right. That's a good load. Yeah. Yeah. And we're also going to continue talking. What is this, Jay? This is part of my dispatcher training series. I continue to get emails asking for copies of my dispatcher training series. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, his Zoom had to update, but he's in here now. Okay. So uh, we are going to be talking more about dispatcher training and fundamentals. There is so much to know. And so what's Janice's thought of the day? My thought of the day is why do people think we are a moving van? <laughs> when we move cars. <laughs> Interesting. Why do they think that? Why do why? I don't think they're instru first, I don't think they're instructed because I get a lot of people that call for quotes and they're like, Well, hey, I want to put <laughs> whatever in the back of my car and I want to do this and I want to do that. And I, I have to explain it to them that it's against the law to put anything in the car other than, you know, your license and, you know, that kind of stuff. Anyways, and that I think is the number one problem. They're not informed properly by the broker when they're setting this move up. Ah. And so they automatically think when they're moving, they're like, oh, there's this precious stuff I don't want to put in the moving truck, so I want to put my precious stuff or stuff I, you know, like my clothes so I have them there. 
before the moon truck gets there. They want to put that in their car so it gets there safely, but they're not being told that can't happen. I mean, I've literally been So told, we, we did it like, shoot, it's been 15, 20 years ago. Um, one of my drivers took a car and they said he stole the Victoria's Secret pink robe out of the car and took it and wanted reimbursed for it. So there's another reason why we don't do that stuff. and the other <laughs> the other you is should have walked up to the door what wearing it, right? oh my <laughs> gosh That would have been some funny we should jokes. all start wearing them um so now let's let's go to the okay the crux of the problem Yeah. is it does a bro should a broker be telling people that Yes. we're oh No, we they don't. should Yes. I think that should be part of the information you give, especially when they say, I'm moving from point A to point B, and I can only be picked up on these certain days. You know they're moving then, right? And that should be just the number one thing. It might be in their contract, but who reads contracts? Hello? Well, I was just going to say, but maybe people, maybe some shippers are just ignoring that information. Yeah, well, I, I know that because there's people on there that list it and say there's stuff in it. I'm okay with like under 50 pounds in the trunk where nobody can see it and somebody's going to try to break into the car. It's when it's like, like we've shown pictures where they literally had it to, you know, the driver's seat was full. The passenger seat was, it was literally full to the roof. Nobody could even get in the car. I don't know what they thought. And you know, and I know nobody informed them of this because when I say this to them, they're like, we weren't told that. You know, so it's either in the contract so they don't read it and nobody reads contracts. I, Yeah. I, I know I, as a dispatcher, as a, as a former dispatcher, <laughs> uh, I have mm talked to drivers who have shown up to pick up cars -hmm. Mm and there's a bunch of stuff in the car. Literally, like you said, -hmm. Yeah. it's like, it's like, whoa, Yeah. this is why, why would you even think of doing this? Right. And Right. I don't think they grasp the concept that You know, there could be guns, there could be drugs, there, you know what I mean? And They get stuck on well, that's the that's the number one reason why we don't Well, do maybe that. that's why, maybe there are guns Why are they and doing drugs that? and we need stacks of laundry to the ceiling to conceal. <laughs> It's actually pretty All those genius. drugs in there. Yeah. That's, okay. Oh, I'm glad we got that solved. Well done. All right. Guns and drugs in the laundry. Yeah. <laughs> So. Um, all right. Very good. Thank you, Janice. That was You're courtesy, welcome. courtesy of Janice. So, uh, we, yeah, as we say, know your ecosystem. And again, I know like th this is actually a problem. It's, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. On the one hand, I want to talk about everything, which means that some people that only want to talk about their vertical aren't interested. Well, it's part of the price you pay. That's the cost of education. Uh, a week ago, Baltimore Bridge Automotive Impact. That was a great show. I'll be continuing to release shorts of information that there's a lot. And, you know, I was thinking about this. I said this during the show. Things move quickly right after a disaster. We know this about all the task forces and committees that we've seen throughout the past few years. Uh, about a month later, there's already a whole new set of crazy world problems. Who knows what happened to the urgency of that task force or committee? You could have a committee on task forces and committees updates each year. And then you'd have committees to manage those committees and those task forces. My point is that I don't know how long this is going to take to actually fully get fixed. But there's a lot of people counting on uh, getting things back and set up. So we talked about we'll be following up at some point. Uh, Genius Marketing in Automotive, that was two weeks ago. This show confused people. Yeah. What do brokers do better than carriers? What did you guys talk about? So I got some takeaways in case you missed it. Uh, we talked about why brokers and carriers are not direct competitors. Really? I mean, it feels that way, but they're, you know... They're not, actually. I mean, they are, and they're not. Yeah. I know, right? Kind This of goes, is... yeah, it goes both ways. It, is, it does. It's very <laughs> confusing. yeah. Um, how shippers force brokers to change. Now, that's a slow-moving battleship, but... Uh, well, anyways, we talked about it. I mean, Pro yeah. I know. These are weird takeaways. Process improvements by connecting communication between verticals. Again, snooze fest. Um, how do you manage your carrier advisory board? Skip said that.
because so many companies are saying, oh, we're carrier friendly. Oh, right. cool. Can I talk to your carrier advisory board? My what? Yeah. Um, brokers say they have X number of carriers to impress shippers. That is just, that's flat out truth. In fact, the lower the number, the more I believe them. Mm -hmm. When I see five figures, no, come on. You don't have 50,000 carriers. Stop. Mm -hmm. You don't. Um, mm, that's like great. <laughs> that's like saying dead people vote. Okay. And how can dispatchers <laughs> and owner operators leverage new AI tech and manage operations? And that's when the place went crazy. <laughs> I would just want to give a shout out to David, David Ray Jr. He was on the show and um, I've been in touch with him. We've been talking about different ideas and content and stuff. Always great to have a, a point of view. Listen, camera one, if you are, you got something to say. Um, I, Paul, I had a podcast and Paul jumped in and he started ranting. And I, man, I contacted him. I reached out. You got a rant? You want to talk? You, you see something missing? Let me know. Autotransportintel at gmail.com. Put it in the comments. Put it in the live chat. We're not going to ignore it. We're not going to start talking about dinners. Pesky screen. Um, show me the truck. We got Charles here in five minutes, so we got to get moving. This is, okay, this is John's trailer. Yes. Okay, John's yes. three-car wedge. Yep. I've loaded this many times, and so have you. Yep. But it is now time. The Triaxle 2000 Take 3 has to go. Storage boxes and ramps. Fifth wheel, electric brakes. The ramps go with the trailer. The winch is installed. Works intermittently. Yeah, in fact, I know it worked at times when, when I was booking them. Uh, let's see. Had a wedge. Recently, we had a welder go over the trailer and make repairs, install a new storage compartment, and paint it. Yep. 6500. Call John. 330-233-8592. Or you can contact Sue. Yep. And I can put you in contact with John. Sue's in touch with uh, with John. Yeah. And and by the way, John is a great guy. Um, yes. He does not beat up his equipment. He takes care of his yep. stuff. You know, like when you say, you know, you know, like, I want I want to buy a car from a little old lady that barely drove. Yep. Call John. That would be John. Little yeah. old lady, little old lady that barely oh, drove. John. <laughs> <laughs> he, he would appreciate that he'd yeah, probably he he'd now do a magic trick he's also yes. a magician john's also yeah, a magician yeah. and then he'd write real. A, he really is a magician he really is a magician so crazy yeah, but he really is there's the trailer he's again. actually working on a movie set right now is he yeah, yeah no he does it all he used to be a roadie he's done everything yep um stick around because we've got charles right after the break now we do have a little bit of news and stuff we can bring charles in on that that'll be fun so do me a favor stick around we'll be right back after this are you completely stressed out from all the calls and the contracts and the verifications of loads where nobody ever answers the phone call murphy auto dispatch services today murphy auto dispatch services has over 15 years in the transport industry we are your office while you are on the road. We book, we verify, and we bill out your loads for you. We have an excellent accounting staff and an even better dispatch team. Give us a call today at 417-273-0021. Or if you want to email me, it's murphyautotransport31 at yahoo.com. Give us a call today. That's the voice of Sue Murphy Auto Transport Services. If you need help shipping a car or staying loaded, talk to Sue at Murphy Auto Transport Services. Visit MurphyAutotransportServices.com. All right, here we go. Please do help me wish a warm welcome once again to Charles Lemons, Lemons Car Hauling Services. Charles, can you see me and hear me okay? Yes, sir. I can hear you. Can you see me and hear me okay? We can yep. hear you. We can see you. This is exciting. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. How you doing, Sue? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. good. All right, Charles. 
you're now on the main stage. Please say hello. Tell us a little bit more about you. Hello, everybody. Um, as you heard Jay say, I am Charles Lemons. Uh, car hauler. Uh, kind of, you know, suck to be a car hauler nowadays, but you know, it is what it is. You just got to make the best of it. So, yeah, I've just been, you know, having fun figuring things out, still learning every day. All right. I love it. I love how you, you got right to it. By the way, that's car hauling. You get right yeah. to it, right? Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, what is, what's, what sucks about car hauling today? What is it? Uh, to me, because, you know, it's kind of hard to find, like, we're, we're, it's a lot of car haulers in the industry as of now. So it's, it's kind of hard to um, stand out with a lot of couriers, you know, especially running in the same lanes that I'm running. So it, it kind of messed the market up and messed rates up and things like that. Mm -hmm. So that that's, that's the sucky part for me. And just, you know, digging through the load board, yeah. just trying to find, you know, good loads. So it's, it's a lot I can go on and on and the, the risk that you take with actually being a car hauler alright so well we want to do that We okay so and, and I want to try to keep it organized because I know you know people are busy but they want to know number one when you say there's a lot of kids see this is the strange part a large broker will say that they've got thousands of carriers available to move and and to the shipper they think man that's incredible so if they hear you say there's a lot and it sounds negative they don't understand what you're talking about can you explain when you say there's a lot of car haulers tell me more about what the inherent problem is there is or well, is it a problem oh no it definitely is so you got a lot of new car haulers that don't understand the market so but not only that they lack the education of the car hauling industry so they just jump in and they're actually to me i call i call it they they those are like victims of of youtube because mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> i'm a victim of youtube um to be quite oh, transparent man. so it once but i've i've made I made it my business to figure it out once I got into it to see how rough it was to actually learn every aspect of the business. But you still have a lot of car haulers that don't have a good, um, that, that are not business minded. Yeah, sure. yeah. And a lot of people like to get into it and think of it as a side hustle when it's actually not. It's like you, you, you can't really, you can't do this part time in my, in my opinion. This has to be a full time thing because I can't take a break. So I have to keep going and going and going because if I'm not working, I'm not making any money. But um, to kind of backtrack, but the, yeah, a lot of car haulers are like messing the, the rates up and things, especially in lanes that I'm running. It's like the lane, it, there were lanes that I was running last year when it was busy mm -hmm. that are not paying the same now because people are taking it for way cheaper. And to me, I just can't do that because I have, I, I know my numbers and I know where I need to be at for us um calls per mile and i just can't do certain i can't do certain loads it wouldn't make sense for me in my business right <laughs> so here's an, and then this is where i i think you said several interesting things there um and i think one of the things that people are wondering the victim of youtube thing we've been talking <laughs> about this for years yeah and mm -hmm. that is that this is why i no longer focus on views i know that i know a lot of people do but i'll tell you right now there's a there's a really large freight channel that's live right now and they have less views than we do no bull like that's how so you can't focus on views and what's happened is a lot of i don't know why but hey you can make all this money every day car hauling mm -hmm. that's what's creating victims of youtube in fact, we all know a guy mm -hmm. that did a lot of those videos, and now he's not in the business. Mm -hmm. This right. is a weird problem. But thats I don't want to focus on that. What I want to talk about is, again, shippers, I think, think, well, rates should go down over time because 
of all this process improvement and assembly line. And, you know, because if you're a CEO, you're assuming scalability. You're, you're Mr. Wonderful watching Shark Tank or whatever. Yep. You're thinking mm-hmm. scalability, rates will go down, everything continues to get cheaper, that's awesome. But that's not what's happening. Mm-hmm. Rates mm-hmm. are going down because the desperation continues to accelerate. Right. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, then you got to think, right? A lot of, a lot of, um, but hat, but guys that do that I know to do hat shot, they're going out and they're buying really expensive trucks and really expensive trailers. So you got to think that they're like over a hundred thousand dollars in debt before they even got a car on their trailer or anything. And they're like so desperate to get a load. They'll, t- they'll take just about anything. And, it's a trickle effect. It me- it messes it up for every for everyone. Yeah. Um. All right. I'm glad. So, you can't do it part time. I hear that too. The side hustle. Yes. Oh god. Yes. I have I have some problems with the words some people use, and it, this hustle word is used like it's good. No, I don't. I don't really like the word hustle. Um, maybe I'm just crusty, but it, it implies that something's going to be easy and you're going to just rake it in and, right. you know, and everybody loves to see it rain. And, no, it's just not true. Okay. No. Uh, your accountant would never say, well, your side hustle's going great. <laughs> wow. Um, having said that, you can't do it part time. Why? <laughs> because it's expensive, right? Very Right, very. Why is it expensive? What's expensive about all this? The main thing is the insurance. Is insurance, and it seems to, it seems to go up every year. So it's like, if your insurance is going up every year for nothing, like what are you gonna do? Like you gotta, you gotta find ways. You gotta be creative to, you know, find some customers and build some relationships, because that's the way this thing works. Without without doing that, on um, the you 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 would stop trying to just eat off the low board, but I mean the low board is there to help, but you still have to build your business. All right, so we've got building business, customers, load board. Before we get to that, though, uh, insurance. We're gonna get to some ballpark numbers. What's your second biggest cost? You. What, equ- Okay, you, right? Okay, there you oh, go. Fuel, fuel, gas. Oh, fuel, okay. Fuel. We'll put you and we'll put salary, fuel, okay. Insurance, fuel, would equipment be third? Yes. Okay. And then what's fourth? Maintenance or? Y- yes, maintenance, yes, for sure. Parts, does parts goes into maintenance? I mean, are you spending a considerable amount of money monthly on maintenance parts? things like that um not besides uh not not really but i did have my truck break down like twice so okay there we go and that's not monthly but when your truck breaks down what's that like oh uh, that's that's actually um horrible it um uh, my truck broke down it was down for like two months so i had to get the engine put in it um not to go off track but yeah, that that kind of it didn't it didn't hurt me, but I was at a point where I was getting ahead, um, and it set me back two months after that. So it's like I broke even. But yeah, those are the things. Those are some of the struggles too that um, they don't talk about on YouTube. There we go. All right, insurance equipment, or insurance fuel equipment maintenance, and then I'm gonna write salary. Because right. that's one of the other things I don't, when you, when you see these videos on YouTube about how much money you're going to make, it's kind of as if all that money goes to you, <laughs> but you get paid last, right? Exactly. Yeah. All right. And number wise, just ballpark number wise, I don't want to know yours, but what do you think like is an industry standard of an owner operator Wedge trailer, three car, four car, nine car is going to be a little bit different of a class. Say four car hauler in monthly insurance. What's the ballpark number cost on that per month? Yeah. Um, 
Sue, was... feel free to chime in. Uh, and you're on courtesy mute. Oh, crap. Sorry. That's I'm right. going to say you're talking a minimum of 10 if you have payments on truck and trailer. Insurance usually runs a minimum of four grand for your basic, and some guys are paying more than that. Now, some are less, but typically it's been four for everybody lately. Okay, so we're talking, this is annual? No, that's a month. Yeah. Four thousand dollars a month, month for what? cargo insurance and liability is most of what okay. my guys are paying. That number changed. Yeah, That's it used crazy. to be used to be like a thousand to two thousand. That's what and I'm saying. Yeah, I had another guy go out of business because his went over four grand a month? just last month. Four grand a and month, and he'd had no claims, no claims. That's insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Holy cow! Let's keep going. Monthly fuel. But to me, overall, my expenses, I don't mind sharing, but I, and I run local too, though, so I'm at about five. Okay, um, that's not bad. They're about 5000 per month, and I run local, so. On your insurance? No, that's me that's total expenses. That's what you're saying, total. What? Yeah, total expenses. Wow, so that's, that's really good. good. That's Holy really cow, good. that is really good, Charles. Yeah. That's awesome. How long have you been in business, Charles? Uh, a little over two years. Okay. Yeah. And have you did your insurance went up though, right? And you had no claims. Yeah, it went up with no claims. Mm -hmm. um, but when I first started, my insurance was only about eight hundred dollars a month. Wow, that's good. Yeah. So it went up to about eleven hundred the second year, and then they was trying to take it to about mm -hmm. fifteen the next mm -hmm. year. I was like, wow. I'm like, come on, man. Yeah. So I found a different insurance company, and I'm back to about eight. Okay. Yeah. Typically, what I've seen that most, and I hate to say it like this, but most of the cheaper companies is progressive <laughs> for insurance is what we've come across. And they go through a number of different places to try to get you the cheapest rates. But most of my guys are progressive. Yeah, I was with progressive, but they kept going up. They went up? Yeah, yeah. So I switched over to um, AIC. Okay. But they don't work with certain curves. If you, if you haul over a certain amount of cars, they don't. Ah, work so with it's certain based. I think it's well, like three know, cars max. And some of them are based on how many miles you go. If you have a 500 mile radius, then you get a lower, you know, rate too. But most of my guys go over that. Right. Yeah, it's 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 a, it's a little tough trying to figure it out and put the pieces together. But mm -hmm. you can make it. I, I made it through some rough patches, so you know I'm just figuring new ways out to scale and grow yeah. and get more direct customers. Yeah, that's, I, I mean, honestly, that's a huge thing is just getting more of your own customers and, and then using central and whatnot as fill-ins. Right. Yeah, I have a couple direct customers and um, brokers that I deal with. So, I mean, honestly, if I if, if the volume that they had was more, I probably would need to work off the low board, but mm -hmm. I have to, you know, put it together just to keep bit. things afloat. Yeah. All right, perfect. We're on we're on customers, okay? Charles, you talk to a lot of folks out there, right? You, you're on the road, you're busy, you're talking to other drivers, other car haulers, mm -hmm. right? Yes, sir. That might seem like a dumb question, but you know, it's a, it's a it's a community that sees each other. Where 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 do you talk to other car haulers? The auction, the fuel island, what? Tell me more. Wherever I see them, I, I always, because I, I like to get insight from other drivers just to see, you know, to get their aspect on how they feel about, you know, the car hauling industry. And some of them actually like it. I actually had to talk to a driver the other day. Um, I wanted to uh, do an interview with him, but he, he was kind of pressed for time and he was over the road. But my, my man said he loved it. He said he loved car hauling. He was the first person I actually heard say that. I was surprised. <laughs> I haven't heard that in a while either. I tell you, <laughs> we should try to collaborate a little because, mm -hmm. see, here's, I was, I was going to say that we're live and I'll just share this with you. This is where, this is why partner, people, companies acquire other companies, people partner up and there's a reason. Because everybody's a specialist at something, but you can't be a specialist at everything. You just said something important. You wanted to interview him, but he was, you know, he had to go. And that's one of the things is that what keeps you busy is what you you know keeps you away from building your channel more. Right. 
and I spend all my time building my channel, I'm not out on the road. Plus, mm -hmm. I don't I do not do that. But if, if we were to try to collaborate a little bit more, it'd be interesting what we could do. And I, and I, I like having you on the show. You've been on a couple roundtables, right? We've known yeah. you for... You, if, if you've been in business two years, haven't I known you for two years? Yeah, because I, I actually... Um, was it two years? No, it was just it was just one round table that I was on. Just one, it, okay. Yeah, it was just one. But I've been watching the show for about them that amount of time, though. And that's really interesting because, you know, I uh, everybody looks for different information, right? Let's go back to customers for a second, for a while. How did you do that? We asked the question. If you came here, you're wondering, Jay, I'm 30 minutes into the show. When are you going to talk about how do I grow my business? Charles, how do you grow your business? For me, I target smaller dealers because it would be it wouldn't make sense for me to target a bigger dealer because I don't have the capacity to do the amount of work that they would need done. So I target a lot of smaller guys that buy like uh, at least about like um, twice a week in the area, so that's me. And I just, I just, whenever I stop any deal, I stop or I come across or a broker I talk to on Central, um, I just handle my business card. I keep business cards in my bag that I, I carry a bag on my chest, so I just hand my business cards out. And believe it or not, I actually do. I use Super Dispatch too, and I believe that plays a big part in showing them that I'm serious about how I run my business when I see the BOL too. So I have had that. I believe that has how a guy that I acquired not too long ago even got back in contact with me when I sent yeah, him an email great. and an invoice from Super Dispatch. Now he used me regularly. But, yeah, I just had my business cards out for the main part and talk to a lot of small dealers at the auction too because I'm at Manheim a lot. So that's mainly how I do it. All right. I like it. I'm somebody, I guarantee somebody right now, the live or on demand, is listening to, okay, how do I do this? Now, I don't, we don't want to give away any secrets, but at the same time, how do you pick who you're going to talk to? And then how do you know what to say so that they don't say, go away, I'm bidding on cars or whatever they're doing? Well, me, my approach is, but everybody's not your customer. So I'll tell them what lanes I'm running or ask them whether they buy cars. They're obviously buy cars from auctions that I go to because after the auction, after auction day, I normally, I'm normally there in the parking lot where the dealers are outside and they're all talking and stuff like that. And I just hand them my car and they say, well, do you go here or go there? And I'll be like, yeah. And then I'll, you know, pick a couple cars up for them. And stuff like that. So in the parking lot is where a lot of dealers are, like after the auction. So if you do know what auction, it means you can find out what days they do the auction and go to the auction. There are a bunch of dealers there on auction day. So that's main. That's main. One of the main things I do. All right. So now you also do some research. Okay. So how do you know when the auctions are? Is that something you learned word of mouth over time? Did you look it up? Tell me more. No, I, I learned by being by going to the auction one day and they was telling me that I couldn't pick up no cars because they having the auction right now. So I'm like, oh, okay, this is the auction day. Okay. And I waited. And then when I waited, I started to see all of the guys in the parking lot. And then I'm like, hold up, who's, these must be people that's just bidding on cars. So I'm like, I'm, I just went over there and just started handing my cars up. Ha, <laughs> That's awesome, because I will tell you, as a former dispatcher, I have called an auction. Hey, I got a driver picking up. I'm checking on a gate pass. And they're like, oh, yeah, no, he can't come tomorrow. It's auction day. Right. And I'm thinking, well, that blows. But you took something that might blow and turned it into a, wait a minute. <laughs> that might be a day to go network. Yeah, that it definitely is. It's, I still do it to this day because I mean, I'm always seeing new people no matter where I go. I do it to this day. Actually, I have people reach out to me from YouTube and, and social media as well to ship cars. Ah, and that's interesting you say that because I just got an email before the show. 
and it's from Aflac. Okay, who cares? Duck hmm. sounds, whatever. Aflac now has a podcast, of course. <laughs> And I'm thinking, why would I go tune in to an Aflac podcast? But if you include it in your different types of promotion and advertising, yeah, I suppose if I'm looking for information, go to the Aflac podcast, might find it on YouTube or other Spotify or whatever. And so adding social media to your marketing and advertising, well, you just said it works, actually. Your yeah. YouTube channel has brought you business. Yeah, it really does. Because everybody, nowadays, everybody is on the internet. Everybody's on social media. Everybody has their phone in their hand. So you got to go digital. So if, if you're into it, or I mean, if you can afford it, that type of marketing, just do it because see, you're going to come across somebody's screen. What about, do you, since we're on social media, do you do anything else? Instagram, TikTok, Twitter? Yes, I have an Instagram and TikTok as well. You do? I have Facebook as well, too, yes. And Facebook. Do you make videos for those platforms? Yeah, the same videos I post on YouTube. I post, like, my shorts on there, too. And just drives traffic, you know. Yep. Do you have a, what's your goal? Like, monthly content or what? I don't know. Tell me more. What What do you, how do you, yeah. Monthly content. I really want to get up to, um, I actually kind of, Build back a little bit because I was, you know, still trying to build a business. Uh, the content is actually like a full time job as well, trying to do editing and get the actual footage and stuff like that. But no, for the rest of the year, I have numbers set to what I need to do. So at least like, you know, four short videos a month and two long videos. So I have like, um, which is like 35, maybe 35 videos to do for the rest of the year but like short videos and like 14 long videos so i do have a lot of stuff coming up that is a lot i you know i i say this uh the uh trying to maintain a content schedule while you already have I mean, everybody else already has a job content's mm -hmm. the only thing i do and let me tell you just doing two lives a week and then some shorts and the scheduling i i and <laughs> And a life of media, I'm full. Like, I, I feel it too. It is really hard to stay on the content horse. Mm -hmm. um, marketing in general is, is, I think, just underrated as far as how much time and work and, and what that. And then what I see, actually, I see. Here's what's happening too. Brokers are doing it too. Brokers are winning the marketing game. Do you see the broker marketing on LinkedIn? Does that pop up in your feed? Uh, not not me. I'm I'm still no. learning LinkedIn to be honest, Jay. So I just got on it, so I'm still learning it. But you're on. That's awesome. Oh, hey, before I forget, Jim wants to know where are you, Charles? He wants you on his team. I'm in Maryland. You're in Maryland. Wow. Yeah, I'm in Maryland. How did the, you're in Maryland? How did the Baltimore? poor bridge collapse affect you well i tried to stay away from the port area um but at one point I, we're now lately i haven't been up there but l like maybe like a year ago i used to be at the port like every day uh, i used to go across that bridge like four or five times a day so it would have affected me if i was still doing that because i would have to go the long way now which is an extra um 45 minutes, which could be a lot when you're doing local work. What's, uh, so that I have it for, uh, for anybody, what's the best way for somebody to contact you? They can reach out to me either my YouTube. My YouTube is Brother Charles Lemons, B R O V A C H A W S L E M O N S. Um, and on every other platform is Lemons Hauling Services. Okay, Lemons Hauling Services. And then do you have like a direct email or phone number or something that you use? Let's, let's say a dealer, because Jim's a dealer. Well, he's a dealer, but he also has other uh, business services that he provides. But what if he wanted to contact you? Is there an email or a phone number? 
Yeah, he could he could text me. Um three oh one six one five one three six zero. Three oh one six one five one three six zero text Charles. Yeah, he can text me. I always got my phone in my hand, I got to because I'm <laughs> people call and left and right for cars, brokers, and it's like I gotta it's like I get anxiety having these days on phone. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> let's do that. Who's calling you and why are they calling you? What are they saying? Brokers. Uh, I get a lot of calls from brokers because, I mean, I guess it's the technology that they use that shows what lanes that you are frequent in. So they call me a lot. And to be honest, you would think that they're calling me just for loads that, that, that are hard to move. But they're actually good paying loads. So that's that's a good thing. But I, And another, another key thing, too, is... Um, I believe that communication with these brokers is a big component to, you know, running your business and, you know, acquiring customers as well. So I like I like to even when things are wrong, I still want to communicate that as much as possible and be clear as possible with them. So, yeah, so the brokers, are, but not to go off track, but yeah, brokers call me every day. I like it. I appreciate that. So, all right, let's go back to you've got. There are people that totally know what we're talking about and, in fact, are busy and doing what they need to do. Then there are people that are like, wait, what are you guys talking about exactly? So let's let's talk about this. Especially anybody like learning dispatching wants to know, what are you guys talking about? So you got load boards where loads are posted. Here's a, here's a dispatching fundamental. Who is posting loads on load boards, and why do they do that? But first, who? And, and I want to do this. I'm going to go to, I think I've got, I think this is, yeah. Who is posting loads? Now, I've got here where they're located, but that has to do with who posted it. Charles, who is posting loads on load boards? Dealers and brokers. All right, dealers and brokers. And I just saw, like, uh, Central Dispatch on LinkedIn had put a... I never saw this before. Central Dispatch posted a video talking about how they're helping dealers. Remember how Central Dispatch talked about the $100 million investment and they're going to improve their... Yeah, they just yeah. released, as far as I saw, just released a video testimonial from a dealer talking about how Central Dispatch how central dispatch helps them. So have you ever seen that before? Right? Never seen. I've never seen a central dispatch video ad. And this is why I talk about the podcasting and the media. Anybody who thinks they've got a corner on the market on video marketing, look out. Auto transport is not done adding players to the mix. This goes for tech companies. This goes for video marketing. Um, this place is going to heat up. So dealers and brokers are posting on load boards. And what's the number one load board as far as volume? Central Dispatch. Central Dispatch. Uh, how many loads do we have right now, Sue, posted? Do we know? And you're on courtesy mute because you're very courteous. Sorry. <laughs> um, when I pulled it up, this is just all the way across. Not just three days. It was 65000 But that's everything. Whoa, 65000 That's everything. I know. Did. That's a lot. Now, 65000 Okay, let's think economics. I'm going to do three days instead. All right, Hold three. That's, well, that's everything. What, this is more days? accurate, yeah. yes. 65 is a lot. That sounds like a lot of loads, doesn't it, Charles? Yeah, it does. In fact, that'd be like a shipper saying to a, so, a, a broker saying to a shipper, "We got eighty thousand carriers." You'd be like, "Wow!" So it's forty four one seventy four, which okay. is also a lot. It is a lot. Forty. We were at thirty four, I think, maybe a month ago, something like that. So forty thousand loads mm -hmm. nationwide, available over the next three days. Yeah. Each load being at least one vehicle. Is that the or one? a pinball machine? Okay. So, uh, you ever hauled a pinball machine, Charles? No. <laughs> Don't look. Have you seen it? Have you seen it listed? Uh, yeah. 
What do you think of... some crazy stuff listed on Central Dispatch. What do you, okay, yeah, tell me. I, well, I want to settle this once and for all. What do you think of that crazy stuff post listed on Central Dispatch when you're looking for cars? What goes through your mind? Um, It just raised a red flag to me. I don't even really look into it because <laughs> I know I'm not going to haul it, so I just just bypass it but i definitely be seeing some stuff on there sometimes like what is this but my, my wife she does the dispatching for me sometimes but she'll see she does it for me all the time but she'll see something yeah, on it too, and she'll yeah. be like because it pays good so she'll look and be like what is this i mean i don't know just just it's, yeah. it's not the car <laughs> do you have you ever have you ever tried to haul a bread truck because that's what i remember as the crazy stuff when i was booking loads because bread, they pay a lot, or like something with a boom or a crane or a U body, or. No, I'm trying. I'm trying to um, let my make make sure my equipment lasts. I'm not trying. Right, to, exactly. You, know. you don't want to beat up your equipment. <laughs> there yeah. it is. Exactly. Exactly. It ain't worth it. Like there will be guys that are like, maybe I can haul a boat. No, don't try. Yeah. Come on. Okay. All right, so, um, right, and Dan says, well, how many are duplicates, right? Right. Or, or, yeah, right, triple posted. All right, but let's let's keep going. Okay, so you got dealers and brokers. What's a broker? Yeah, you asking me? Yeah. A broker is someone who acquired a customer um, that has something to move. Cars, cars. We're in the auto transport industry. Brokers help their customer move their cars. All right. There are thousands of brokers. Did you know that? Yes. Yeah. There are very large companies with build with floors and buildings. That's how big some brokers are. In fact, I think one of the biggest might be like RPM. That company's global. Mm. Okay, all the way down to the individual broker who heard about a training course, make a bunch of money, again, victim of YouTube. Right. And they are in this game trying to compete with thousands of other brokers of... what? How, how does a broker make money? What do they do? That's a good question. Um on a on a smaller scale that i that i don't know to be honest with you jay that's fair that's fair i will tell you here's what i've learned here's what i think a broker is a business that says to and you just said it like a big dealer let's say you're a franchise dealer mm -hmm. and i've got um out on uh coffee table i've got the 150 top dealers in the u.s See, when you read in a, a trade magazine like Automotive News, mm -hmm. and again, this is why I talk about the full ecosystem and I bore some people with that, but by reading Automotive News, I see these top rooftop dealerships nationwide. These are giant companies like mm -hmm. we're Auto Nation or um, these large dealerships, right? Right. They are not going to keep a Rolodex of 100 car haulers around the country. Right. They're not going to do that. They're going to hire a brokerage like mm -hmm. RPM to manage all their transports nationwide, whether it's going to a customer, whether it's dealer to dealer, whether it's OEM to dealer, right? Whatever their needs are, they call the broker and the broker handles all that stuff. And if they have a problem, they pick up the phone. They're to call on one company, RPM. Now to become RPM, how does a single owner operator get to the point where they can take nationwide business and manage all those logistics in daily? That's a, that's a lot. That's a tall order. In fact, a company as big as that is counting on an owner operator. That's impossible. Never going to happen. Right. There's no yeah. way you can compete with us because we can take care of nationwide dealer groups fleet management companies like what's you know holman what's wheels what are these companies these are companies that are nationwide businesses that uh liquidate 
and remarket vehicles at such a scale, there's no way even a even a band of owner operators. If you took one op owner operator in every state and they banded together as a coalition, still couldn't manage right. the business of a rooftop dealer. So, so rooftop dealers, that is a definite example. Or how about nationwide auctions? If you're America's auto auction, are you gonna are you gonna keep a list of fifty carriers? No. no, no. You're just gonna call a broker or something. And in fact, you don't just have one broker; you have several. Diversification. Right. So yeah, now, good. and this is where the large brokers are, are kind of competing against each other for market share with these shippers. Mm. So as an owner-operator, yes, you will need to go to the load board to find loads that are posted by these large brokerages that are working with these nationwide shippers, but there's a problem. Yeah, that that's 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 a um that's a good point, Jay. But like you said, cause that, that's what I was thinking. It's like you know the brokers, well, the the dealers don't want to deal with the couriers on that kind of level, given the the issues that you have with couriers nowadays. Cause I hear a lot of couriers talk about the brokers. I'm not against the broker. Uh, I I like brokers. So a lot I of I do too. Yeah, want to want to get rid of the broker and the courier it's it's just some crappy couriers out here just to, to to say it all and they make it bad for people like me that's actually trying to build a quality company so it's it's a struggle jay well you know what i've learned is that's where i think and this is where advertising marketing youtube social media when a broker can see who you are yeah. It increases your chances of getting work for them. Right. But I have noticed this. Even though they know who you are and they've put you in a different category because now they know who you are and they trust you, do they pay better now that they know you and trust you? That's I don't point. think so. I don't think so, neither. And I don't know why. I don't know why. Camera one, I don't understand why. If you know somebody, you say you trust them, you talk about being carrier friendly, you know the carrier is the backbone of this industry, why don't you pay them better now that you know there's something about them that makes them more than average? I don't understand that. I can't figure it out. Yeah, I had a broker. I had a broker that I deal with that seen me on um, TikTok after we didn't already, you know, we didn't already have a good relationship. But then he seen me on TikTok because he never seen how I actually look. So when he seen me on TikTok, his wife seen me on TikTok and she was like, is this our limits hauling services? And then he looked and he was like, yeah, that, I believe that's him. And then he called me and talked to me. He was like, he was like excited because he was like, man, he seen me on TikTok and he was just like, he like, man, you're doing a great job, man. He said, we love you, Charles. And, you know, we just, you know, back and forth. But we have a good relationship, so. That's awesome. Well, you can't please everybody all the time. But what you do, you have a couple happy dealer customers. And then you mm -hmm. have, when you book loads on the load boards, let's talk a little bit about what that's really like. Is it still hard? Have you figured it out? Yeah, uh, no, it's still hard because they, for one, they haggle you, and when you try to negotiate, just like I mean, just even when you ask for twenty five more dollars, it's just like, well, this load was just posted. Um, we we not you know negotiating with it right now. I'm like, okay, and I'll just you know let it go because, like I said, I'm not doing loads for for a cheap amount. So yeah, it's still hard, man. Okay, let's talk about $25 for a second. I know as a former dispatcher, when I asked for $25 and it was a problem, I felt I felt something. Yeah. What was it? Yeah, it's, irritation? When when I if, if I can't get $25 out of a broker or whomever it is, I 
I'm, I tend to not deal with those people. Because uh, normally when I ask people for more money, they'll be like, yeah, I can do it. And then they'll just dispatch it over. But if if I got to, if it's an issue with anything, any aspect of me doing anything, dealing with anybody, I tend to stay away from it. I don't know if, I know I've told this story, it's a famous story, <laughs> it's not famous, but I, I got so irritated one time, I was talking to a broker, asked for $25, I probably started at 50 moved it down to 25 then I started to ask for 15 10 and even 5 and I kept him on the phone just to berate them about not giving me an extra $5. Now that's wrong, Jay, mm. you're, you're bad. But it's the, it's the principle of the thing. Come on. It's a car going states away. You can't do $25? How much does it cost for two people to go to McDonald's? $20. At least. I think if you spent 20 at McDonald's, you're still hungry. Yeah. All right. Now, I know that, and that's why I started talking about asking for more chicken nuggets. Yeah. You know, that's not right. That's not right. Um, all right, so booking on the load boards, negotiating rates. How about getting the how, how about getting the load and the accuracy of the information? Any problems there? Uh, yes. Sometimes the phone numbers don't be right. You can't get in contact with the people you're delivering it to. Sometimes you can't get in contact with the origin. It's like you got a call back. They're like, you got 24 hours. And then it, it makes it hard for you to schedule what you need, with you, what you have to do and actually getting more cars to make it make sense. It's like, if I'm going a certain way, I need to speak to these people to make sure, but to tell them, hey, I'm calling about X, Y, and Z. Is the car ready for pickup? It's kind of hard to do that. And yet, let alone call a dealer, you can barely figure out who is the point of contact that deals with used cars. You would think it's a used car manager or whatever the case may have been. But it's like when you call it, don't nobody know who you're talking about. And you get put on hold, you know, hold for a while, then they may hang up, then you got to call back, then they transfer you again. Then they're like, well, did you leave him a message? Yes, I left him a message. Okay, I'm calling back again. It's like, well, the driver is about to be like on the way. I'm just trying to call to let you guys know. Because there have been instances where I get to the dealer and the car's already been picked up. I'm like, like, come on. Like, I tried to call 17 times and no, I got a hold of nobody. So it's... It's a struggle, man. Those are some of the things that people don't talk about. Well, that's where I, two weeks ago on Genius in Marketing, we're talking about, I was saying that the focus is on the sale, on the client, on the broker, on the shipper. And once the deal gets done, nobody's worried about the dispatch. Right. Just like when you have a dispatch issue, you, so you have a problem, Let's follow this through. You got a problem with your dispatch sheet. It's not just getting a hold of the dealer, which is also a problem. But let's say you have a problem with the dispatch sheet. How easy is that to get changed with the broker? Um, if you could, depending on who the broker is, if you can get a hold of him again. If you wasn't on hold for or for fifteen for fifteen minutes already, just trying to acquire the load, so got to call them back just for them to get the just for them to fix the dispatch sheet. So, yeah, it's it can be a headache sometimes. Don't you wonder why there's so many errors on a dispatch sheet to begin with? I mean, it's a lot. Yeah, I try to figure that out because it's like, if you're a dispatcher, what is your job? Like, what do you do? <laughs> That's what question. I've said. What are you doing? Right. Because I even had a issue with one of the big brokers. Um, I called and... It's like every time that I call, because, I mean, you can see that I'm set up for uh, two cars. So you can't self-dispatch more than two cars. So I call for more because I'm local. So I run back and forth sometimes. So I call to book the loads out. I've already self-dispatched the two that I'm allowed to do. 
So I will call her, maybe if this said there's just six more cars. I'm gonna call and I'm gonna ask them about those cars. And they call and they're just like, Well, did you did you did, are are you able to get you can't self dispatch it off the low board? I'm like, I'm only allowed to do two cars. I'm set up for a two car, but I'm you know, I run back and forth. I do it all the time. And they like, Well, I don't well, you need to get and this is like giving me a whole attitude about me trying to help you guys move your cars. I'm like, so I even had to ask ask the young lady, I'm like, what is your job type? She's like a dispatch. I'm like, well, why are we complaining about dispatch? This is what I'm calling you for. If I didn't if I didn't have to call you, I wouldn't call you. So that was the whole thing. It's like when I asked her and like kind of corrected her and she was like, um, who was this? Because I dealt with, I deal with her all the time. I guess she didn't realize who I was. And then she was like, oh, there's lemons. I'm like, yeah. She's like, boy, I know you ain't talking to me like that. And then it, it just became a joke after that. But I guess me asking her onto a dispatcher kind of like made her do her job correctly and just like change her attitude. But that's that's just one of the things that I deal with. Well, I will say this. So there's a few things there is that if you can reach a human being on on like a human level, which you did, it's amazing how much better your business can can go. I I know that through the time I got to know different dispatchers or brokers or sales reps and like Patrick at Posey Transportation. Hey Patrick, it's Jay again. I'm, I see this load. You know, and man, it changes the whole thing. It saves time. Yeah, you can get more money. I mean, they, people know each other. Now, my point is and it's funny because I'm going to talk about AI now, but uh, there is like this human need, I guess because it's such drudgery. Um, and you said, hey, I, I wouldn't even be calling. I Listen, I don't even want to make this call. I think I've right. actually said that. Right. I'm, I'm not here to bug you. I just need the dispatch. <laughs> right. Now, let's go to AI or whatever for a second. And that is that. We're not still doing the old telephone system where you call, you know, Penn Station 99 and then they start patching cords. No. So why are we still doing this so manually? Why yeah. all these incorrect info, phone calls? I don't know if there's still fax machines, but it's still so manual. Yeah. Doesn't it need an update? Yeah, in the price... You need an update in the price. Update in the price, too, right? Yeah. <laughs> because they, it's like sometimes those self dispatch load boards put a rate on it that's ridiculous, and you have to call to ask them for more money. So they're going to, they're, it, it's like they, it's like the brokers control the rates uh, in a in a sense. But and you just said it right there because I've I've had this conversation before. Who controls the rates? And the answer always is. It should be the carriers. And I'm saying, well, you just qualified it. You said should be. Right. Is it the carriers? The answer would be no. No. It's the brokers. And you know that because then when you call about a load and they say, will you do it for 50 bucks less? Do you ever get that one? Um, who, no, no. Not me, no. because I, I. But nobody says that to you? Nah. Really good. That's good. Nah, I haven't came not yet, at least, but Oh man. Sue, that one's rampant, isn't it? She's on courtesy again. She's so courteous. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. I mean <laughs> And there's certain brokers that do it. You just haven't come across one of them. Is what that's awesome. Yeah. The fifty fifty bucks less crew. Yeah. Listen, Charles, it's one o'clock. I'm so glad you were able to take this time. Um I think you shared a lot of awesome yeah. information. Yeah, thanks for having me. Real feedback. It. Yeah. it was cool having you. And I want to bring you back on. Yeah, just let me know. Never be ready, man. I, if not, I'll just be watching like like always. This is a great show to learn from. To Dude. all the car haulers out there, if you want to learn, you need to watch this show. ATI. Awesome. Bit. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, thank you, Charles. Spread the word. Let me know how I can help. Let's keep in touch and uh, have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much, Charles. Yeah, Y'all take care. Yeah, right, you too. You.
Thanks. Uh, bye. Bye. All right, I put it back in the waiting room. That was awesome. Shout yeah. out to Charles Lemons, Lemons Hauling Services, Rova Charles Lemon on YouTube and other social media. Got a couple things in the uh, mailbag I want to finish up with here. And, um, man, that was, we touched on a lot. That was really cool. Oh, this is, uh, okay, so there's Charles. Yeah, he's driving a two car, which I think is also interesting. Talking about growth of the business, two years. Yeah. Uh, kind of got a lot into, of local, he said, too. So that is awesome. You can do that with a two car. That's I mean, the way to go, exactly. Yeah. Local. Well, locals. Locals are a great way to go. Well, <laughs> I feel like I'm looking at Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> are those cars? Those are cars. I think wow. they're those new things. Gems or something. They're called a gem. I, wow. Because I had a guy that wanted me to move like five of them, and that's kind of what they look like. I, I mean, that it might is... be a different Chinese version of it. But... Did he, like, come out of a time warp? With that load? <laughs> Loading in a time warp. Straight from that China is, is where they're from. <laughs> okay. Hey, did you get the memo? All right. Talked about this Tuesday night. Truck stop now. Scammers yeah. continue to come up with new fraudulent ways to harm customers, and some customers have fallen victim to these scams. New scams. Customers may receive emails from similar looking domains impersonating truck stops. Customers are being asked to provide proof of payment by scammers. Wow. You may receive a phone call where a scammer is falsely identifying themselves as RMIS. Wow. Frosters are posing as RMS support. I got a phone call about a week ago on a weekend. Yeah. And a guy said he's from Verizon. Really? Now, he sounded sketch. Uh -huh. <laughs> and he goes, I need you to call me back. I'll call you back in five minutes. He called me again in five minutes. I didn't do anything, and I haven't had any trouble. Nothing's happened. So what there was you he go. Trying to say Scam he avoided. I don't know what he wanted. Huh. I don't yeah. know what he wanted, but you know. They're trying everything, so that. Well, and, and you know what? Them. One out of a hundred people are going to go. Oh my God! What happened? Okay, use caution. RMIS support representatives will not ask you to provide confidential information. RMIS support representatives will not send unsolicited emails. I, here's the, this one got my attention. All legitimate emails from Truckstop will originate from the domain at truckstop.com or at e.truckstop.com. So don't do info.truckstop.com. You know, like, see this one? I could see this one. When it says, like, mm -hmm. E spazzy dot, you know, duply do. You well, know yeah, that's somebody, stupid. somebody's weird name on there. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. But what if it's at info at e dot info dot truck stop dot well, e and dot info dash truck stop would be <laughs> too close to it, too, well, honestly. Uh, it's what I'm saying. As a customer, how am I supposed yeah. to keep so lists no. of legitimate emails? Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds horrible. Uh, always identify the sender before clicking. Don't oh, yeah. open attachments. I just, just skip it all. FMCSA forces broker transparency from Uber Freight after double brokering scam. For perhaps just the second time in in its history, forced a broker, the FMCSA forced a broker to reveal what a shipper paid. This is what it takes to reveal what a shipper paid. By the way. Wow, oh, okay, the load promised to pay eighty-eight fifty. Right. The load promised to pay eight thousand eight hundred fifty for a twenty nine hundred mile reefer run. When its drivers got the paperwork, that old sinking feeling crept in. Now we're not gonna go into how they felt something sinking, no, but they happened? they yeah. knew something was wrong. So Blaga had booked a load off of DAT truck stop with a broker called Delta, but he never got a pickup number, having been double broke oh, he didn't he didn't get a pickup number. That was the sinking feeling. Mm -hmm. Just Having been double, double brokered a time or two in the past, he knew something. Times brokers give the load to a few carriers. He instructed his driver to park once they got loaded and show them the paperwork. Despite being booked on DAT, the BOL noted that the load came from Uber Freight. Blaga mm -hmm. was set up to haul for Uber Freight, so he called the company to get the bottom of the discrepancy. And um, when he reached out, knew something was fishy, sent Uber Freight a message. 
including the original rate con. And think of all the time and effort to do this. This... You know, it looks like it, it kind of worked out in his favor. I'm not going to read it all, but this is one load, one scam. Wow. So he actually picked it up, though, and it's going to give it back to him. This is the way I'm reading this. Right. right. So Blaga sent Uber Freight a message. Okay. Uber Freight looked up the load, put Blaga in touch with Anthony, the account executive at Uber Freight, in charge of that load. Anthony traced it back to a load that Uber Freight had tendered to another company. Oh, Maroon Express. Jeez. I mean, but just unwinding so, all this. Yeah. Just, yeah. So that means there's a company called Maroon Express involved with also the other supposed broker, right? So there's two people in this whole thing. That's crazy. I know. It is crazy. It's, it's scam city. Yeah. Um, hey, SBTC has issued a terror alert. Okay. I know. Now, I, I say it like that because I was like, oh, well, that's kind of weird. But then I thought, well, maybe they're it. What if, well, what if they actually... S SBTC advising all truckers serving America's supply chain to remain vigilant and brace for probable backlash by anti-Israeli protesters in the U.S. as all reliable sources indicate a retaliatory strike against Israel by Iran, now imminent. Okay. So I'm just going to say this now, since nobody's watching. Um, I don't... I guess even if you stay out of the politics, you can be affected by it, right? Right, right. Doesn't that suck? Yeah. Next. Hey, Super does not put their bond info on there, and that is important. I agree. You, <laughs> I think you said that. What does that mean? Well, actually, it came from Jen. Oh, well, from Jen. What happened okay. was she booked a load through there, and they weren't paying. And we can't access the broker bond information on there. And that's something that we need to be able to do if we're going to file against the broker bond. So that's what she was complaining about. Oh, okay. So you want, or rather, if the, if one needs to file on a broker bond, mm -hmm. the broker bond info should be on the, is it dispatch? Yeah, it should be on Super Dispatch. It's not. Okay. It's um, not. Is what she was saying. But I have it on there. I don't. I, I don't know who she was trying to get a hold of. So maybe that's the problem. Should so. it? Okay, but well, typically it's on there. In okay, so in a broker profile, the bond info is there. Yes. Okay, I would think that so, it is. Okay. So maybe she just got yeah. one in there that's not on there. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm. A, I'm gonna call this fake news. <laughs> Because I just looked it up, but I didn't look up who she was trying to look up, so. Okay, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> you want to watch a couple videos? Sure. More trucks stuck inside of that. <laughs> okay, inside, so it looks like. Le who wants to play? Is that legal? No. It's a half of a truck, even. That's hilarious. Oh my. You know Did what I love? For Copart. <laughs> you can see this oh. is in. It's in. Te in they're in Texas. Oh. Hello. Uh, now, not that that matters Hello. a hill of beans. Did I just think it's Copart? great. Are you there? Or coming from Mexico? Is that what you're trying to say? Well. <laughs> Well, I actually wasn't thinking that. I was just thinking that the chances of somebody pulling a gun are high. But that's oh. actually yeah, right. So there's you got two reasons why that's it. even more interesting. A dolly. Yeah. Dolly. Right. Good job, Jay. There was one guy from Texas watching, and you lost him, too. Here we go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Now, no I took way. it. I I'm took out the Greek music, yeah. The, the, the soundtrack is... That was the soundtrack, and I took it. All right, give me a second. Because I didn't want to get demonetized. But this is... Okay, now, you can see he wasn't driving. He The truck was parked on that shot. 
but I love this video and it's making me hungry. Yeah, no doubt. I know, man. And I tell you what, I want to eat I that. Personal Whatever chef. she's making, I want some. Yeah. So she's she's making okay. the little. Uh, All right. I'll call them right now. She's boiling them. Brogies, maybe? I don't know. Right. And I think it's Greek, I, but I don't know. It's you know. Is Progies Greek? Where I don't know. Mashed potatoes. And then yeah, and then he's got like a bacon tomato parsley. And there's okay, like a little I sour cream. Better. Yum! Yeah. Sign me up. Market. No <laughs> doubt. <laughs> know, he has so a chef awesome. in their in their truck with that us. Is, that's so <laughs> cool! So cool! She has, she has on her chef white season. <laughs> <I know, laughs> that's just hilarious. I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> Funny. That is a great video. <laughs> um, let's see here. Let's see what else we've got. I think we're about done. We rolled the video. Oh, let's see here. Um, oh, Charles, that's right. These are. We'll have to do this next time. Charles sent in a couple photos, and I think he's still in the live chat. Um, so he was going to ta okay. talk about this photo. All right, I'll get him to pay. This yeah. photo. Oh, that's an AK at Milton. No, really. And this photo. Yeah, I mean, so what we'll do is we'll tee that up. That's our teaser for next time we have Charles oh, on the show. Remember, car. ATI, we leverage information. We don't ship cars. Just talk about it. Get ATI in your business. You can go to atiautobusiness.com. And I'll tell you what, I'll put that in the live chat. atiautobusiness.com. You go to the home page. Click on contact us and send an email. Also, you can now follow us on LinkedIn. There's the podcast and it's the full ecosystem. It's the full experience. There'll be stuff that you are not interested in. There'll be stuff that you didn't know you were interested in that you learned. And then there'll be things that you thought and then they weren't true. And we actually talked about it because we do all those things here on ATI. Just tell them to get a receipt. We've got next, okay, next week, I yeah, think we're going to yeah. start talking about Dispatch he, Fundamentals next week. Okay. Um, what are, what is, what are Dispatch Fundamentals? What am I talking about? I will about put soon? it on your sheet. Sure. And I will well, call and tell Well, I mean, logistics is a huge thing. Okay. You have to know where, where your states are and your cities are. You um that's a number one thing. I had to learn geography all over again <laughs> when I started this job, right? Because you you weren't familiar with everything either, right? Way back in the day. That's a really good point. In fact, I was telling somebody that I've lost my ability to talk about cities. Mm, like, right? You can talk about, you know, mm -hmm. cities, mm -hmm. you know, interstates. The oh, length man. of cars, the weight of cars. Um <laughs> Wow. Those are the things you, when you're looking at a load, first glance, you've got to be able to go, okay, is this going to fit? Is this going to work? That kind of thing. So that's part of it too. Um, so I want to, brokers, what we'll you know do we'll is, uh, we'll, we want to do, we might, okay, so next time mm -hmm. we might do like, let's talk about load boards again. Okay. Okay. And in fact, it's when's the last time we updated our top twelve load okay, boards? Thank you. Hmm. Uh, that was last year. Was that it? We did okay. the top twelve, didn't we? Um, was it last year? I will have him call. I swear it was last year. <laughs> I don't know. It, it might have been a few years ago. So we're Here gonna talk about you? we're gonna talk about mm -hmm. load boards. We're, okay. So we're gonna talk about top load boards. Yeah. Then we're gonna talk about. Uh, kind of load board 101 yeah like how to get a load what to look for how to get a book. load I will give it to my driver how, how to you. book a load yep yeah okay. um and then uh and then what you know and then like yeah like the specs and the map right mm -hmm. maps Brokers specs and because one of the things that I find so interesting and the reason we're talking about this is again because people keep asking about the dispatcher training series Someone asked a really good question. What's changed since 2017 on your dispatcher training series? A lot. What do you think has changed? I was thinking, pay okay, types of payment. Types of payment, EBOLs, um, 
e a lot of e everything <laughs> mobile we apps really yeah i mean we're doing a lot of stuff differently than we did back then i think i have let's check it i think i've got EBOL on here somewhere. Really? I didn't think it was back that far. Well, you know me. I had an inside... Uh, Well, yeah, you were working... I had an inside track at Super Dispatch. So I knew more about EBOLs than the average bear. Actually, in the fall... Did you know this? In the fall of 20... In the fall of 2016... I was demoing EBOLs. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I know Beck got a hold of me and asked me to do it, There and he is. I, I couldn't do it. Mobile Um, apps. Other all my apps. drivers were old school. They weren't going to, you know, switch. Oh, look, So dispatch it, it monkeys took me on like here. another year or so before Um, I started to be able to do that with him. well, that's right. Um, okay. Interesting. We just, right now, we just, I just popcorned a little bit because there were several ideas at once, and I took the screen down because I, I got excited. Um, this is part three of three of the dispatcher Mm -hmm. Well, that means training the 50 series. hours. This is what I call Hey, they're advanced. going to pay the $50 in storage We'll get to and advanced and over you just time, reimburse them that delivery. but next show, I want to go back to Okay, rudimentary. thanks, Michael. Okay. Now, here's part of why. Yeah, it's uh, they're there right now. Next show Today's isn't Tuesday. just for new I thought dispatchers. it was tomorrow, but they're But saying, what I want to also do is, in yeah. as as we, Right, as somebody, but today is a different today. Yesterday fixes. was wrong. Remember Right. how I was just talking about the example of the patching, the telephone calls, and all the calls, and all the stuff? Right. AI Yeah, can they're help there right us. now. Did you want to Right. call and talk to the I don't guy? know who's working on it. I don't know what systems Okay. are in place. Okay. But I know All right. this. Did you know that at the dealership, when a customer calls a dealership, There are now AI voice programs that answer the phone and help route the call. And that customer is not taking up the time of a human being. We don't have that. Wow. We're going to have that one day. I don't know. And, and, it's, and, and it's not to replace us, but to help the system. Because Charles said he can't work. He can't get... He can't get His work done because he's so busy His phone. dealing with stupid stuff. Right. Well, and his, his phone's ringing nonstop. Yeah, Exactly. I heard. That needs to stop. He needs Yeah. to be able to get back to work. Right. So there's somebody paying attention, working on this. We don't know who they are. We don't know who is inventing the flux capacitor, but somebody's working on it. So we're going to be talking about it. And these dispatching fundamentals will help Doc Brown in his science lab. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I want to thank everybody for joining the show today. Again, thank you so much, Charles Lemons, Lemons Hauling Services. Check out Brovachov's Lemons on YouTube. If there's something you think this show can do to help you, please let me know. And, um, oh, and Dan says, how do we spot a scam load? Good one, Dan. How do you spot, Sue? How Too do you good spot? to be true. That's what we always do. If it's If it's too good to be true, go verify some stuff. Like, like I, what I usually do is I go to my factoring company and have them do the background Awesome. work. Thank you so much. Not that that's infallible, because I found out that is not. <laughs> so, but that's my where I start first. And if I don't know them for sure, it's usually not a good sign. So here you go. That's another AI program. Load scam. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I sent Copy him the picture. the load, throw it in a load scam, Okay. Have and him do it'll the background either give you check. a green light or a red light. Yeah. Yeah, that would be nice, wouldn't it? See? <laughs> it does a Look background what ATI check to tell does. you if it's double brokered, you know, the whole thing. <laughs> so it's like, oh my God, load scam. There's already a guy. There, there are two. There Making are already an two app. companies working on load scam. <laughs> yeah. Um, there you go. So that was a good question and and a good answer too. And thanks, thanks for the question, Dan. All right, everybody. That's it. This is a really long show. I'm sorry to keep you hostage so long. Get the podcast. Listen to it on the weekends while you're mowing the yard. <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, Janice, thanks for the thought of the day. Take notes. You're welcome. 
All right, you heard it here first. Janice, Jen, and Sue, and the rest of the crew, what do we say, office? Goodbye, Goodbye Sue. Sue. Goodbye, Sue. Thanks, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Take care, and we'll see you next time. Peace out, everybody. Good day. Good day.